Hi and welcome. In this video, we're going to go through a two by two example where we find the diagonalization of a matrix. So let's diagonalize the matrix A, where A is one six in the first row and two five in the second row. So as part of diagonalizing this matrix, our whole goal is to write A as a different product of matrices, specifically P times D times P inverse. And what makes this diagonalizing is that D is a diagonal matrix. So how we know whether or not we can do this comes from the eigenvalues. So if A has two distinct eigenvalues, meaning it has two different eigenvalues, then A is diagonalizable where P is made from the eigenvectors as the columns and D is made from the eigenvalues on the diagonal. So our process for doing the diagonalization is to first find the eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2. So we do this first, and if we don't get two distinct ones, then diagonalizing isn't possible and we can't continue. But I did set this up so that this is going to work, so we'll see. We're going to find our two eigenvalues, lambda 1 and lambda 2. Then we're going to find corresponding eigenvectors for both of these eigenvalues. So there are infinite number of eigenvectors for each of these eigenvalues, but we're just going to choose two specific ones that we'll use for the diagonalization. Then we're going to assemble our matrices. So P will have columns that are made from the eigenvectors we chose, and then D will have the eigenvalues on the diagonal. And then as part of finding the diagonalization, we'll also need to find the inverse of P, just to be really complete about it. So since this is just a two by two case, I'm going to do this whole process by hand. When this gets to be larger matrices, three by three and larger, it's really much better to use technology to help us out, but since this is a two by two, we're gonna practice doing everything by hand. All right, so let's go ahead and find the eigenvalues. Our process here is to find A minus lambda I and then take the determinant of that matrix. That determinant will result in the characteristic polynomial, which we will set equal to zero. So A minus lambda I is just A with minus lambdas on the diagonal. So we have one minus lambda and six in the first row, and then two, five minus lambda in the second row. Now to take the determinant of this matrix, it's AD minus BC. So that's one minus lambda times five minus lambda, and then minus six times two. Now we're just going to simplify to make this look a little better. We'll distribute and then combine like terms. So from the first two terms that are being multiplied, I'm getting five, minus lambda, minus five lambda, plus lambda squared, and then we have a minus 12. So combining like terms, I'm getting lambda squared, minus six lambda, minus seven. And this is my characteristic polynomial for the matrix A. Now our goal is to find the eigenvalues, so we're gonna take this characteristic polynomial and set it equal to zero. So I have lambda squared, minus six lambda, minus seven equals zero. Factoring this, I get lambda minus seven times lambda plus one. And so setting each of these terms equal to zero results in our two eigenvalues. We get lambda equals seven and lambda equals negative one. So we have two distinct eigenvalues. This tells us that the diagonalization will work. And I'm going to label the eigenvalues just to help us keep track of things. So let's let lambda one be the negative one and lambda two be the seven. All right, now we need to find eigenvectors to go with these eigenvalues. So the eigenvectors come from our statement that A times the eigenvector equals lambda times the eigenvector. So I have A V1 equals lambda 1 V1 and A V2 equals lambda 2 V2. And what I like to do is rewrite these as A minus lambda I times the eigenvector equals the zero vector. So we'll do these one at a time. I'll start with lambda one, which is negative one. So I take my statement, I put negative one in for lambda and I'm going to solve for my vector V1. So I'll write A here. And then when I do minus a negative one times the identity, that's just adding the identity. And then I'm going to let my eigenvector be X, Y, and this is equal to the zero vector. Now I'm just going to combine those matrices and solve. So I'm getting two, six, two, six, 
and this is being multiplied by xy, my eigenvector, to be equal to zero. So from this, I'm getting the equation 2x plus 6y equals zero. So x is equal to negative 3y. This means I can write my eigenvector v1 as negative 3y y for any y in r. So this is the general form of the eigenvector, but we need a specific eigenvector for our diagonalization. So let's let y equals one. This gives me the eigenvector negative three, one. All right, so now we need to just repeat this process for lambda two. So lambda two is seven. I'll put that into my equation. So I'm taking my matrix A and subtracting seven, zero, zero, seven. And this is multiplied by my eigenvector and then equal to the zero vector. Simplifying by combining those two matrices, I'm getting negative six, six, and two, negative two. From this, I get the two equations, negative six x plus six y equals zero, and two x plus a negative two y equals zero. So both of these should yield the same result. I'll do the second equation. I'm getting two x equals two y, and so x equals y. This means that our eigenvectors for this eigenvalue are of the form y, y for any y in R. So we need, again, a specific eigenvector to use. So let's just let y equals one again, and I'm going to choose this eigenvector as one, one for my diagonalization. All right, so we're making great progress. We found our eigenvalues and our eigenvectors. Now we need to just put everything together. So P, my matrix, comes from the eigenvectors as the columns. Then D has the eigenvalues on the diagonal. And we're also going to need to find P inverse. So I'm seeing the matrix P has negative three, one in the first column for the first eigenvector, and then one, one in the second column. So this is just dependent on how we choose our eigenvectors, but this should work for any eigenvectors that correspond to the eigenvalues. Then D comes from my eigenvalues. So I have negative one and seven on the diagonal with zeros in the other position. And our last task is now just to find P inverse. So for a two by two matrix, the inverse matrix is one over A, D minus B, C. And then we swap the A and the D and put negatives on the B and the C. So using this, I'm getting one over negative three minus one. And in the matrix, I now have my first row as one, negative one, and my second row as negative one, negative three. So I'm starting with the matrix P and just manipulating it here to get the inverse. So the constant I have on the outside is negative one fourth, and we'll just distribute that in. So I'm getting P inverse to be negative one fourth, one fourth in the first row, and then one fourth, three fourths in the second row. And there we go. That's my matrix P inverse that completes the diagonalization. So the matrix A we started with can be broken down or rewritten into these three matrices, P times D times P inverse, where P, D, and P inverse are as written here. Okay, so that is how we find the diagonalization for a two by two matrix. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.